The Ocean Sound Machine's Hydrosynth, or ASM Hydrosynth, is a fascinating digital synthesizer with a lot of control and a lot of voices. It might seem familiar with its oscillators going into a mixer that then can be modulated with filters, amplitude, and effects. There's LFOs and envelopes to be able to modulate all of those parts as well. But what really differentiates it is the oscillators that have their own sort of wave shaping types called mutants. And these mutants can be everything from a sort of wavetable to wave shaping to frequency modulation and more. What this offers is a lot of timbral variety. And when there's timbral variety, I love to be able to use it with MPE. The ASM Hydrosynth does a great job integrating MPE into its systems. So you can control almost all of these things in some way with the MPE controls on your morph. Let's take a look at how we set that up in the system and then assign MPE controls to different parameters on a patch. Setting up the Hydrosynth for MPE is pretty simple. You just need to go to System Setup and then go to Page 5 and down here in the bottom right is the MPE setting to turn it on. You'll also notice this changes how aftertouch is transmitted and how MIDI is transmitted and received. It all locks to the MPE standard at that point. So once you have MPE on, you exit, it saves the system, and now you can use your mod matrix to access uh, different parameters. So you can apply polyphonic aftertouch to different parameters as well as the MPXY. Applying the MPE modulators to your patch is pretty simple. You enter the modulation matrix here, and then you have several pages where you can apply your modulators, such as LFOs and envelopes, or your MPE gestures. You simply select one of the slots and use the dial to find the MPE gestures. So, for example, uh, MPE. X uh, or Y, there's two, there's absolute and relative. And then you can use a polyphonic aftertouch uh, for the Z or pressure. Once you uh, find your uh, pressure, for example, then you can press the bottom button below it uh, in that same column and select a parameter that you want to apply it to. So then you can apply it to say oscillator one, and then go to the next thing and find the parameter in that feature. And then how much of the pressure you want to affect. So I'll take you through some of those different things that you might want to do for different sounds. Let's take a look at some different ways we can use the sound design properties of MPE. This first example is kind of an unexpected one. It's using just a kick drum. So it might seem a bit excessive to dedicate this whole thing to a kick drum, but it gives us an opportunity to create lots of samples and lots of kicks that then we can use in a uh, digital audio workstation and cut them up. So I have the opportunity to create a bunch of different tones and uh, different attacks and characteristics. So something very short something more you know thud like and then we have something that's almost more like bass and then I can adjust a couple of things with these sliders on the side and kind of dial in the perfect kick uh, here I can uh, change the attack so I can get more of a click so this way it's thinking about MPE is a nice way to uh, create variety, then I can then sample and then use those samples in my project. We can take this same kick patch and then do some more sort of wild experimental things with it. If I turn on the arpeggiator, I have in the uh, mod matrix, I have MPE assigned to the arpeggiator division an octave. So now I can use the arpeggiator in combination with this kick drum. So now it's taking advantage of the pressure and the arpeggiation. 
and turning a kick drum into something that's very different from just something that we'd use for four on the floor. In this example, I'm using a patch that, again, has quite a lot of variety because of the way we're using it with MPE. If we listen to it just sort of played with the pad, we can hear that it's, you know, kind of a nice, you know, sort of dance chord type house music thing. But uh, when I use it with the uh, morph, I can really kind of get inside that sound and use it in different ways. So I have the octave set really low, and I can almost create these sort of like burbling from the surface uh, type designs. So now if I move the octaves up and uh, take off some of the delay there using this slider, um, then I can sort of, I can use the sound in its sort of original intent, which is as a sort of dance music vibe. And then using MPE, I can sort of create the modulations uh, just by playing it and sort of putting the energy in that way rather than using an LFO, which is kind of the traditional way of doing it. And so now again, we have like this uh, variety that we can get that we wouldn't get otherwise. In this patch, I use the wave scan feature on oscillator one, and I apply that to the uh, Y position on the uh, keys. So this gives me an ability to scan through the waves. And then additionally, using the filter on the pressure, I can really create a lot of uh, timbral variation just by going up and down and pressing. And then when we use this with chords, we can get a really organic sound out of it because each note really kind of has its own character depending on my position on the key. So those are some different varied examples uh, for different types of music that you can get using MPE and the Hydra synth. And taking advantage of the playability from MPE, you can really get different life out of the Hydra synth than you might from just using keys with after pressure.